What do you do? Well, I want us to think about the federal response in four areas today that I think have footprints in the past. What is the uh, creation of the Soil Conservation Service? Uh, Soil Conservation Service emerges in 35 as a spin-off of the Drought Relief Service of a consolidation of bureaucratic uh, responsibilities. But it's the Soil Conservation Service uh, that kind of sends agents in this part of the country into back to county, uh, Los Angeles and the Otero region, uh, out of the plains, and they provide funds for farmers to apply what at least is known about the kinds of soil conservation techniques that can knock that dust down and hold it in place, sort of. And that is, <coughs> depression years, right? The economy's collapsed, wheat's less than 30 cents a bushel. Uh, farmers don't have much money for gasoline or horse feed or anything else. Uh, but the Soil Conservation Service comes in with programmatic activities that has money behind it so that farmers can apply and get money for gasoline, money for horse feed, and get out into their fields with their plows and um, plow that desolate ground. And they say, well, why are you going to do that? And that doesn't make much sense at all to do that. But it does. Because when the Soil Conservation Service knew which a lot of farmers out here didn't buy at first, was that if you make that surface rough, you can stop some of the movement of that soil across the ground. And you might have to do it consistently. But break it up, make it rough, but you also destroy that capillary action so that you're going to even say what maybe might be a little bit of precipitation in, in that, in that uh, uh, that that soil. Let me go on just a, a little bit. So me, this is what I'm talking about. Take a, a piece of property like this, which is more likely a wheat field in the 1920s, and you've got to bring it under under control. And that means plowing it, as the Soil Conservation Service said, and then here's the adjustment: plant sorghum grain, and sorghum grain is drought resistant. Everybody gets up that yay high. Right? And uh, the idea is not necessarily have a crop, a grain crop, that's okay too, to get something out of it. What you wanted to do is slow that wind down and catch that moving soil between the rows of that sorghum grain and hold it. So there are a couple of things you could do. But the task is really monumental. I mean, how could you not be depressed if you look out your front door and you see that? Where do you start? What do you do? You need money, you need expertise, you need help. And I say this because a number of farmers in this part of the country said, that's just the way it is. Uh, this is a time in which uh, many farmers that didn't plow under their wheat straw uh, and it gives them humus to the ground and help hold some of that soil, uh, they burn their stomach. It's easy. If you don't have a gasoline pots, you don't have to get out of your horses, and it's just easier. Harvest your wheat, set it on fire, and you're rid of all that trash. Problem is, if it's dry and the wind's blowing, there's nothing there to hold it, and uh, uh, this could be part of the result. Some farmers thought, yeah, you know, you can't, it's bad, it's dry, it's going to get better someday. You can't blow away all the topsoil. I mean, it, it goes forever. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you just can't. It's bad now, but you can't ruin the country forever. It'll get better. And, and so just wait it, wait it out. And so the machinery sat uh, in the barnyards and got covered up. A uh, very typical scene uh, during the 30s. But still, what do you do? And it's a time in which these are a group of people that have not really been enamored with the federal government and programming. And so when you get federal agents to come out into this part of the country and try to explain programs that farmers can tap into to get money, almost free money from the government, or at least low interest rates, uh, the kicker is, the catch is, you take money from somebody, what? Strings attached? Right? Probably? Okay. And that's the, the, the situation here. Take money from the federal government, yeah, are obligated to do certain things. 
you have to pay attention to the engineers, the uh, soil conservation experts, and do what uh, they, they, they tell you. So it's a sound game. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's the agent, uh, uh, see my finger out of the way, right there. You're a bunch of farmers sort of stooping about this. Uh, in this case, um, they're talking about soil conservation uh, program and grant applications that they can get money for. To an extent, I would argue that technology helped cause the dust bowl, given drought conditions, right? I would also argue that technology helps end the dust bowl once the rains start, start returning. Here's the most effective technological application uh, in eastern Colorado, back in county, uh, in that corner uh, down uh, in the southeastern part of the state. Uh, this is um, a Lister plow. Lister plow is like a double moldboard plow uh, backed up like this. So when you pull it through the ground, it creates those really deep uh, furrows and, and ridges. And you can plant the sort of grain in the bottom of the furrow or, or not at all. And what happens? That wind uh, starts moving across there and it sifts in and dusts in and it gets, it, it holds, uh, uh, it, it, it holds some of that moving soil. Not all of it, but it's enough to make a difference. And a little bit here, a little bit there is, is a consequence. And here you can see the effect of that. So you have those blister furrows that filled in with dust, uh, even though it's a dusty day out there. Nasty, gritty, and all of that. Look how rough those furrows are. Uh, that's part of the technique, too, that the Soil Conservation Service uh, was, was talking about. Something that will grab that wind and slow that soil, uh, soil down. This is a little bit exposed, uh, overexposed, but nonetheless, uh, you can see how uh, some of those furrows have, have filled in. And it worked. And it particularly works when the rains start to return a little bit. And you can get some, some weeds growing. That's the key. Soil conservation services, you know, plant sort of, uh, grain sort of, that's fine. But if nothing else, do what you can to get Russian thistles growing. Weeds, weeds are good. Weeds cover the soil. Nobody cares uh, that they're weeds. Uh, well, actually, uh, the farmers care. You cut those Russian thistles when they're still a little tender, mix it with cottonseed cake, and you have, a, you have cattle feed that would have about the consistency of the nutritional value of straw, but at least it was something. Oh, okay. Uh, here's another technique. Uh, contour, contour of furrow plowing in your pasture. Deep furrow, throw the slice off to the side so when it rains, uh, it's going to catch, uh, it's going to catch some of that moisture in the, uh, in the furrow. It's going to hold it uh, between those ridges and it's going to disseminate. And here's a point of, uh, that I was talking about, where you can see footprints of the past kind of things. Uh, and uh, footprints. It's flying in the day, looking out, uh, looking out the window uh, on Sunday, uh, around, I don't know, the flats somewhere in, in uh, a, down the plane, we're coming in. I looked out the window, and I could see uh, these contour furrows in somebody's pasture. And they were green. And not only were they green along uh, the, the edges here, but they had bled out in between. And clearly, it's something that had been applied in the, 19, in the 1930s. Uh, and it worked. But next time you're up in the air, look out, coming to, uh, coming to the airport, you're just driving around, uh, you'll see this. And after a couple of years, uh, it fills in, and you've got uh, you've got grasses restored. This is one of the techniques of the that the Soil Conservation Service was was talking about. A little different uh, uh, contour here that you can uh, you can see, but the very deep furrows, rough. Even you get a little moisture, quarter of an inch, it's going to do something. It's not going to run off. Uh, you're going to you're going to to hold it.